Hi guys, this is uh, Mara the Reading Hedgehog with my uh, video review of Mouse Heart by Lisa Fielder. This is a ARC copy. The book came out, um, is going to come out May 27 of this year, and I do intend on buying it. This is a middle grade animal fiction book. Um, and sorry, I'm totally on blank. I'm really tired today. Um, synopsis time, right? Bear with me, guys. I'm just, I'm really, this week was long. So if I'm a little slow, that's why. Um, Hopper is an ordinary pet shop mouse until he escapes. Soon he finds himself deep within the untamed Brooklyn transit tunnels and in Atlantia, a glorious utopian rat civilization. But all is not as it seems. Hopper misses the siblings he lost in the escape. Atlantia is constantly threatened by rebels, who wish to bring the city to its knees, and there are cats everywhere. Cats who leave the citizens unharmed, and no one can seem to answer why. Soon Hopper is caught in the crosshairs of an epic battle, and as the clashes rage, Hopper learns terrible, extraordinary secrets. Deadly secrets about Atlantia, painful secrets about his friends, and one powerful secret about himself. So I gave this book 3 out of 5 strawberries. Um, I liked it. It has some issues, but as a middle grade animal fiction book, it was really good. This is the first book in a planned series. Um, and it was creepy. The the cover the cover does it justice. It's it's a creepy little book, but I liked it. Um, and actually, it was one of the more accurate dystopian civilizations I've encountered um, in literature. It this had more realistic isms than a lot of young adult dystopians I read. Um, characters first. So Hopper, I liked Hopper. He was you know courageous and and caring and all that and very adorable. I mean, he's a little mouse. He was just very cute. Um, but I got really, really tired of him not seeing the obvious because the reader is going to figure out, I don't care what age the reader is, the reader will figure out very quickly what's going on with Atlantia, or at least kind of, they won't figure out the details, but they will get a general sense of kind of what's going on and who to trust and who you shouldn't trust. And of course, Hopper trusts all the wrong rats. I guess I should say not people. There are no people. He trusts all the wrong rats and it just it kind of annoyed me because as you you knew, I knew, that you he should not trust them and it was so obvious and he was trusting them so it kind of made him look stupid. I think the author tried a little too hard to create suspense when while uh, unfortunately making it really obvious to the reader. Um, I don't know if the author is uh, un underestimating her intended reading, au reading audience, maybe, um, but in any case, that did kind of annoy me. Um, Hopper's little brother, Pup, is so cute. I loved him. Um, he's, I mean, he doesn't really uh, figure into the story all that heavily, but he is adorable. I really did not like Hopper's sister, uh, Pinky. She was such a jerk. I never felt sorry for her, and I never... I, I mean, I understood why Hopper wanted to reunite all of his... with all of his siblings, but I was kind of like, if she got run over by an Amtrak, I... I was okay with it. She was just the biggest jerk ever. I mean, there was... I felt no love for her, and I, I felt like she, did, she really did not care about her family at all. Not a little bit. I could see her stabbing Hopper literally in the back if it served her her needs. Um, the rat prince in this, Zucker, I really liked him. Um, his accent was a little annoying, but as a character, I really liked him. He was he was really cool. Um, I loved the the brief glimpse of history we get about Zucker and um, the mouse that originally started the rebellion. Um, can't say who he is because it's kind of a spoiler, but you'll figure it out. Um, but I really liked that, and I just, I don't know, he was just really cool. He knew how to do things, and he was really fighting for what was right, and he took care of Hopper, and I just, I really liked him. Um, the, oh, before I get into the villains, Firin. Uh, she's a girl rat that Zucker kind of likes, and also a, a, re a rebel she leads. 
um, the rebellion for the rats that are more or less aligned with the mouse rebellion. Um, she was really cool. Uh, she, for lack of a better way of putting it, she really kicked butt. She was cool. She knew how to use a knife and stuff, and I really liked the interactions between her and, her and Zucker. It, it worked well. She was a tough female character that did not have a chip on her shoulder. I really liked her. Uh, the villains in this, mm, they, they were okay. Um, Titus, the rat king, wasn't really all that intimidating. Uh, he was kind of cartoonish, kind of like kind of reminded me of, like the great mouse detective in just I don't know I didn't or or Fible I just didn't find him very intimidating I didn't feel sorry for him either though um I think maybe kind of and then you're supposed to feel just a tiny bit sorry for him I I didn't uh and the cats um I can't really say too much about giving a spoiler I mean it's not really a spoiler that the cats are actually kind of the bad guys um, but, I mean, they were cats. They weren't that scary. There was one cat in this, Clops, Cyclops, um, that was kind of creepy. He was a mangy, one-eyed cat that was, was kind of creepy. Um, but other than that, th this was not villain-based, really. It was, um, mostly adventure-based and moderately character-based. I mean, Zucker was a great character. Or is it Zucker? If anyone knows how to pronounce his name, please let me know. Um, the plot was really good. Uh, it was kind of, it was a bit redwallish. Um, the story does take place, like I said, in, underneath Brooklyn, so it does take place in the human world, unlike Redwall, which it takes place in its own world. But, um, the, I mean, this involves a prophecy and rebellions, and the mice fight with swords and things like that, and they dress in kind of like medieval, medieval clothing. So it, it's kind of like Redwall, but in a in a uh, human world setting and it was really fun I mean again it was it was predictable it was easy to figure out but it was it was fun and the utopia the utopia was good um, they had secret police they had people that made sure that the citizens were saying the right things about the Emperor and stuff um, and they had these refugee camps where they re-educated refugees and th there's more to the refugee camps, I can't tell you without spoiling it. Um, but it's it's creepy, it's good. Um, it's kind of like a Mouse Hunger Games in some ways, with a shorter outcome. Um, but it was really good. I, I, I really enjoyed the dystopian aspect of this. Um, again, the only thing that really kind of irritated me was Hopper's naivety. I guess it kind of made sense, but because it was so obvious to the reader, I just got frustrated with with him. So that was the only thing that really irritated me. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is, if you're looking for a really fun uh, middle grade animal fiction uh, series that is kind of like Redwall but takes place in the human world, um, then it has dystopian, um, I want to call them more than undertones because it's pretty dystopian. It has a dystopian flair to it. This, this is a good pick. Um, it's bloody. It's got some really, really gory parts. It's, um, it's not a lighthearted read. There really aren't that many funny parts at all, if any. Um, yeah, their cats get their eyes poked out and little rodents get torn to shreds. It, it's kind of, it's kind of gruesome. Um, I, it disturbed me a little bit just because I find that kind of stuff in, I find it disturbing when animals tear each other up and, and stuff like that, but it was a fun read. Um, not not the worst book you could pick up. It I, I enjoyed it. I intend to read the rest of the series and to buy this book when it comes out. It was a lot of fun. Three out of five stars. Um, so yeah, I will leave the link to my written review down below, and I will see you next time with my next review. Goodbye!